None of the women in this picture exist. They've all been created by AI art. In particular, Midjourney. And Midjourney has just released version 5. And to be honest, it takes things to a whole new level. So we're going to look at what Midjourney 5 is all about, what it can do. So join me on my journey with Midjourney. Let's go. So I've been playing about with AI art for a few months now and particularly Midjourney, which in my opinion is probably the best of the AI art kind of systems out there. And it's very easy to sign up. I'll show you how. All you need to do is go along here to midjourney.com and then you join the beta down here. And basically Midjourney runs on Discord. So you need to have a Discord account. Basically just accept their invite. And then when you've done that, basically you'll be able to go to the Midjourney uh, Discord channel, which is here. It's free to join, but you have a limited number of pictures that you can create. But there are, of course, paid versions and stuff like that. So then you just go down to any of these newbie rooms. Yeah, newbie rooms. And then you just go into the uh, chat and you put forward slash imagine. It knows it's coming up there. And then you just put in what you want. So, for instance, we would put... Um, Man in his 30s on plain background, photorealistic, okay? Something like that. Just very simple. It doesn't have to be like that uh, for, you know, a YouTube thumbnail, right? See what happens. Obviously, uh, and then it goes away and it will generate. Now, obviously, in the mid-journey bot, there's so, you can see there's so many people creating, like, incredible things here. Don't know what's going on here. Um... So you're sort of in the queue of things and you just have to scroll down until your picture. I mean, look at this. Wow. I mean, this is what I'm talking about. Look at this sort of black and white vintage photo here. A vintage photo of random Turkish girls in a room who are about to go out for dinner. Camera, Leica 3, film type. Wow. We'll come to this. This is what can really get cool effects. I'm going to nick that uh, actually while I'm here. Um, so that's what you can do. You can find pictures and styles you like. I mean, look at this. This is really cool. Vibrant colors, 8K lens flare, full detail, smoky background, dim lights. You can, you know, find prompts that you like. And that's what it's about. We're all on a learning journey here. And it's about finding uh, prompts and stuff. Although I do notice that some of these descriptions are still in the mid-journey version 4 style. And I'll come to that a little bit later. But anyway, we'll scroll down. Uh, hopefully to my uh, pictures. Now, this is a pain, actually, when you are trying to sort of scroll down and find your particular picture that you've asked for. But I will show you how you can take the mid-journey bot and put it into your own server, yeah, your own channel on your own server, so you don't have any of this other kind of stuff that's going on. Okay, so here we are. So here it's created. It, it told me, to be honest, that to scroll through, which is why it, a lot, because... It's so popular and so busy now to find it when it was actually rendered, which is why I'll show you a, a much better way to be able to put it in your own Discord server. Take the mid-journey bot, put it in your own Discord server. But just an example. So there we are. It was a surprised man in his 30s on plain background, photorealistic for YouTube thumbnail. So I see so many uh, YouTubers and uh, they use sort of generic stock photos of a surprised person uh, on their YouTube thumbnails, fine. But no need to use stock photography. Create your own. And with a bit of sophistication, you can get it to look a little bit like yourself. And so you can create thumbnails. In fact, talking of thumbnails, so here's an example of potential one I was trying to get to look like me. It doesn't look like me, it's a bit older, but, you know, basically white guy, bald head, <laughs> beard, beard's a bit longer than I wanted and graying glasses I wanted more square glasses but I also use an image of me as a kind of uh, prompt as well which you can do you can add in your own images which I'll also uh, show you about but you can see you know if you're trying to create YouTube thumbnails how super easy it is and in fact my main thumbnail you'll see uh, I use this picture here as my main thumbnail uh, and then all I did is just added the text so I told it here, again, I've used a reference picture of my lovely girlfriend as a reference picture and then added in a description. Uh, the kind of reflects 
what's in the picture because that helps otherwise it starts adding in things so she wears glasses in the picture she had shortish blonde hair you just repeat that description otherwise it will add things to the to the image uh, for use on a youtube thumbnail with a plain purplish background sort of plainish there and then again you'll notice i've, I've used very uh, precise sort of details on the style and look of it in terms of cinematic 35 mil lens f 1.8 stop accent lighting and global il illumination uh, again i nicked that element of the prompt of somebody else like who did amazing photographs of um some indian village woman from some uh, indian village and it just looks like it looks stunning and i thought you know i'm taking that just as i sort of took that other prompt but if you as i say um if you if you're a paid member and you go to midjourney.com you have your own sort of account it, it it keeps all the pictures that you've generated here uh so you can see all sorts of different things i was trying to create some little icons here again using uh, my image as a prompt uh then i have to describe it's got bold head otherwise it gives it hair short beard can't quite get short beard it's too long for my liking uh, wearing blue square glasses the word blue has sort of transferred into the background a bit that's what you find sometimes it's not perfect uh minimalist flat design vector just for kind of a, you know potentially an icon i mean i could put some graphics around that you know lord kenzel's channel or whatever i you know adapt it can work on it to get it sort of looking more like me if i wanted just making little subtle changes here and there and that's what i find with mid journey mid journey five it's about uh iteration just keep trying adding words tweaking bits finding styles you like from somebody else as i said we're all on the same journey mixing it in with your own kind of observations if you see something you like i mean you know go for it the image i used here was actually um the image from my youtube icon as it were for for, for me that's why it's got this sort of white circle around uh, here but you can see it added in here uh, so that's why I kind of uh, changed it. So it just it's so versatile. So such cool images. Look at this, a Grogu uh, singing a song of some sort. How cool is that? Uh, but it's not all about photo images, as you, as, you, as you know, if you can tell from that icon and like images like this. But if you want to add the bot, then in Discord, in the Mid Journey Discord channel, you go up here to the Mid Journey bot, then click on it. So not click right, just click on it. And you go add to server. So if you've already, if you've created a spare channel, so here we are, I can add it to a sort of a, a server here. So I can add it to my dojo, which I've already done basically. And then I'm going to go to my uh, Discord server and I've got, uh, I put it in a place called AI Art. All the images here uh, are my own and therefore I'm not sort of hanging around waiting for my image to be rendered you know and seeing loads of other people's uh, images rendered at the same time although that's quite interesting so you can see kind of the work i've been doing you know just developing tweaking styles and looks look i was trying to get a surprise woman here didn't really get the only really i don't know the only person looking surprised is this one here so i i find it's not it, it sort of does i'm finding version five does slight iterations starting from sort of if you put in surprise sort of not really surprised a little bit more surprised more surprised, totally surprised. Do you know what I mean? Where what I'd really want is just four different people who are surprised, if that makes sense. Again, it's all about the tweaking. So that's the key thing. If we go back to the Mid Journey server and we look at the main points of what is in Mid Journey 5, it's taken the photographic element of things to another, le uh, another level. What is version 5 and how do I use version 5? So there are different ways of using version 5. At the end of the prompt, you can put dash dash v5 or go to your settings which i've already done very easy to do uh you just put forward slash settings okay hit the return on that and then it comes up with all this the settings so you've got mid journey you've got the older versions of mid journey here mid journey version one five i mean there are some things i think four still does a little bit better and you might like it for instance if you put in unreal engine it, it sort of gets ignored in version 5. So if you like that Unreal Engine 5 kind of look, it still works in mid-journey version 4, so you can put that in. But anyway, in the settings, just select mid-journey version 5, and then it will default to that. So the, the, one of the, the main differences here, so you've got an improved 
image resolution. So all images made with version 5 are at their max resolution and quality. So it's basically they've already been upscaled. So when you're in your uh, your Discord, like here, and you see here these U1, U2, U3, U4, these are the versions. So that's U, that's 1, that's version 2, version 3, version 4, and the U is for upscale, right? So if I click on this guy, say we want upscale number 2, if I click on it now, boom, there it is. Now, normally that took a little bit longer to do, but it's already upscaled and that's why it's so quick now. So that's one of the main things from the uh, version 5 is that the images are already upscaled. And so when you ask for an upscaled image, it happens really quickly because it's already upscaled it for you. So the biggest difference, uh, obviously, as I said, is the improved resolution, but the powerful prompting. What they want us to see here is we want to see using a mix of brevity and relevance. Every word you use needs to be highly relevant because the effect of tokens is greater. Okay, and there's a whole kind of, you can learn about prompting and stuff like that. You'll notice the prompts designed to look like photographs will look even more like photographs. And that's what I've found with version five. I mean, you can just tell from the images here that I've been doing. This was my first version of version five. And I took a prompt that I'd use in version four and stuck it in here and I was just blown away at the detail. Uh, what's interesting is the character of these people, you know, that that there's imperfections in the skin and that's what gives it its realism, this kind of the wrinkles and you know, just little little faults here and there, which is which is part of natural life, you know. That's how we are. We're not all perfectly, you know, skin, we're not all perfectly photoshopped. That's that's the detail that's what gives it its realism in my in my kind of view and i think it's it's stunning the, the the results that they're getting the other thing is here and this is the key thing originally you'd put in a prompt like it would be you know describe the picture comma style comma you know unreal engine 5 comma photorealistic comma you know stuff like that whereas what they now want you to do your prompts will benefit from being more written in the form of sentences rather than lists so because of the improved natural language processing, they want you to put in like the writing you learned in school. For example, an astronaut floating in outer space may produce more predictable results than astronaut floating outer space, which is the kind of prompts that we would use in earlier versions. The remixing is more powerful. It's more accurate and more powerful. So here, this, you know, the, the remix here, much more kind of interesting. There's not, there's not a lot of radical changes in the, in the remix. It's much closer to the, you know, so there's much, the changes in the new versions of the remix that you get from the picture um, are much more subtle. So I think you can really fine tune the image that you're looking for. Uh, that's the key thing. You can fine tune how Midjourney reads your prompt according to the value. So dash dash stylized. The dash dash is like the syntax of prompts. So you add in, it's like programming language. You'll see over here, dash dash AR aspect ratio two to three. That's like almost like a programming language. You can fine tune how Midjourney reads your prompt according to the value of dash dash stylize to give your prompt maximum control you can add dash dash stylize n where n is naught minimum to a thousand to nudge mid journey back and forth along the spectrum the lower the value the less mid journey's house style will influence how your prompt is rendered and mid journey does have a very distinct house style for instance i just put in something plain so just for example as an experiment did something for my gamer tag which is lord kenzel so if we go imagine right it doesn't know who lord kenzel is just put in lord kenzel i'm basically asking mid journey just do it in your own style baby yeah that's what i'm saying that's the that's the key thing uh what the stylize uh it basically is the waiting between you relying on mid journey's uh style and being more precise so using their in-house style and they have a really nice look i like their kind of overall uh, style and look there's nobody in this what are they what's what are they doing here this is interesting right okay that's interesting it's it's last time i did it it came up some really interesting figures now it's just assumed it's a pub the lord kenzel pub maybe if i put in a portrait uh you'll notice here as well when it renders through we're at 62 percent when it that's a, that's a mate that's a that's quite amusing actually i was expecting it to do an image of a person which it did before but it sort of created like a pub called the Lord Kenzel. 
you'll notice as I uh, once this is rendered through, uh, letters are still an issue for it. But that's fine. Nothing that can't you can't take it away, put it in Photoshop or or another similar kind of program stuff. I use uh, Pixel R because it's free. But look at this. Now the interesting thing is. I put in Lord Kensal. I lived a long time in a place called Kensal Green and Kensal Rise, which is a tiny little sort of enclave uh, in, in London near Notting Hill and Labrick Grove. But it's almost like its own little tiny place. And it's got a cemetery there, which I think is where it's drawn its reference here. And then there is a pub called the Kensal Rise. So, but look at that. It's, it's come up with its own... So I think this is this is kind of almost it's interesting. It, it's looked, I think it, it's it's what Lord Kensal might be and found Kensal because there's no there's no other Kensal. It's Kensal Green and Kensal Rise. Those are the names of the places where I used to live in London. And there was a pub called the Paradise by Way of Kensal Rise, which is based on a line from a poem. And then there's a cemetery, Kensal Cemetery, Kensal Green Cemetery or Kensal Cemetery. And here it is. I think that's why that's influenced it. But that's weird. Last time I did it, I'll show you. Last time I just put in Lord Kenzer's as a prompt, it came up with here. It went for it went for a lord. Yeah. And I ended up thinking, wow, this guy looks super cool. He looks like, and I forget the name of the actor, but the one up here looks like the actor from uh, Kingsmen. What a bunch of handsome fellows they are. But that's interesting that I do it this time and it comes up with pubs or potentially a cemetery <laughs> uh, because it's it's drawing on the on the Kenzel. I mean, what's this been to be like a wine bar? Actually, oh my gosh. That looks like the junction. That look, There's a crossroads in Kensal Rise and it it looks like that. Yeah, it could be any generic street in, in, in London, but it's a certain type of architecture of the time. Wow, that is kind of spooky. There's a pub called the Greyhound on the other side of the road here. <laughs> that That looks like the crossroads. Anyway, uh, I'm sidetracked by that. That's why you need prompts and lots of uh, descriptions and stuff like that. So back to the main changes in version five. The lower the value, the less mid-journey's house style will influence how your prompt, your prompt is rendered. Stylize 1000, better for artistic images. And stylize naught, better for photographic images. Okay, so you, if you want it to look more photographic, go, you can go dash dash stylize naught. And the other thing is aspect ratio options in version five. So you can put an aspect ratio of here. You can see like two to three or for these images that I did I originally put in. Well, I put it for, actually this one I didn't. I put it for a thumbnail and it, it, it put it in the right dimensions. That's interesting, actually. So but I think previously I'd put in aspect ratio put in AR 16 by 9 to give it that kind of you know otherwise you get sort of a standard portrait but you can go really crazy and you can have like a 1 by 10 so you can have like a long a long line like an infographic type thing uh, which is really interesting by putting in um, that various different aspect ratios it says look you can create much wider and much narrower canvas sizes and image weights are back. So image weights weren't in version four, but they were in previous versions. And you would put dash dash. Uh, so you'd put dash dash IW, where N is between 0 0.5 to 2. And you can increase its influence, the image weight. So basically, if you're using an image, if you say, I want you to rely on the image much more than the prompt, you put in dash dash IWN. And it will it will draw more on the image that you're using and stuff like that. So those are the main changes. Now, the other aspect as well, uh, as I said, the real key thing and the biggest change is to be much more descriptive in in a kind of open prose way. I think what we're going to do is let's take this. Um, let's take this image here that I used here. I'm just going to try that. Yeah. And I'll try that photographic prompt that we had. So imagine put in the prompt and then. We're going to go black and white on this one in that style. This is the sort of detail you can get to. This is, to me, this is sort of high level uh, work. Let us go take out the cinematic. Let's just take out all that cinematic stuff and just go with Leica 3 film type Kodak Tri-X black and white scene, all that. Let's see what it does. 
Okay, so you can see here, um, I forgot I put in surprised here. So uh, because it was for a YouTube thumbnail. That's interesting. So I've sort of mixed and matched the photographic style with my desire for a kind of thumbnail, <laughs> which is really amusing. But what it does reveal here, I mean, look at that. That's stunning. But you'll see what I mean about I've got the word in the prompt surprised, a surprised look. And you'll see what I mean about the different it's, it's almost on a spectrum like she doesn't look particularly surprised. She doesn't look particularly surprised. She looks a little more surprised and she looks super surprised. You know, it looks like a professional black and white photography session. Unbelievable. I mean, that's just stunning. If I hadn't been trying to, if I hadn't put plain background and a surprised woman, although I think it's still really, really cool. Just that's a really great prompt if you're looking for kind of that black and white photographic um, style and stuff like that. Really, really stunning. Just before I go, the Mid Journey team in an open town hall were talking about Mid Journey 5. They're already working, unsurprisingly, on Mid Journey version 6. Now, considering the leap in terms of photographic quality between version 4 and version 5, I'm really excited about version 6. And get this, they say version 6 will be out before the summer, before August. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting. I hope you found it useful. If you did, then do me the great honor of hitting the likes because I like it and YouTube likes it and it helps people like you find great content like this. And of course, if you are new here, then do me the great honor of hitting that subscribe button, toggling that notification bell, and that way you'll know when I go live with content like this. And I'm going to be doing more mid-journey stuff and I'd love you to join me on the journey on mid-journey. Thanks for watching.